Example 129. An economist claims that less than two-thirds of married women spent over $1,000 on their wedding gown. Glamour Magazine sponsored a survey of 2,500 prospective brides and found that 65% of them spent more than $1,000 on their wedding gown. Use a 1% significance level to test the claim that less than two-thirds of married women spend over $1,000 on their wedding gown. If these results were obtained from internet users who voluntarily went to the web to answer the survey, does that affect the result of the survey in any way? Alright, so let's start with the first part of the problem here, which is to test the claim, it says. Test the claim that less than two-thirds of married women spent over $1,000 on their wedding gown. So the claim here is a claim about a proportion, right? And they're saying the proportion for the population who spent over $1,000 on their wedding gown is less than, less than two-thirds. Now two-thirds as a decimal is approximately 0 0.67. I'm going to use that for our calculations later. From there, we need to come up with the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. So remember, we look at the claim, we look at the symbol involved, and we say, okay, that's a less than symbol. That means it'll be appropriate for the alternative hypothesis. And that means that the null hypothesis should express the opposite idea. So if you're not less than that value, you must be greater than or equal to it. All right, then we need to collect some data. The data for the problem here is actually pretty limited. All we need is a sample size. We see that they surveyed 2,500 women, right? Then we're going to need a sample proportion, a p-hat. The sample proportion here is 65%, because 65% of these 2,500 women spent more than $1,000 on their wedding gown. I'm going to write that as a decimal. And then from there, you should put a significance level down on paper, so 0 0.01. So we're going to take this data now, and we're going to plug it into a test stat formula. The test stat formula is a little bit different, but it is a z formula. And we're going to use the p-hat value that we have for our sample and we're going to compare that to a proportion from the null hypothesis and then we'll divide by this square root. Now the square root has a unique structure. It's the proportion from the null hypothesis. Its complement value we'll call Q0 and then divide that by N. Alright, so let's plug in the numbers for this particular problem. P hat is 0.65. The P0, which comes from HO, is 0.67. Peanut. It sounds like I'm saying peanut, right? <laughs> so I'll take the square root, and the peanut again down here is 0.67, and the complement is what's left over from 100, so of course that must be 33%, right? A 67% spent more than 1,000, the remaining 33 did not. And then we'll divide by 2,500. Make sure that 2,500 is indeed under the square root. All right, so let's go ahead and plug that into our calculator and see what that will give us for calculation. So we'll have in the top parentheses 0 0.65 minus 0 0.67, of course that's a difference of 0 0.02, divided by the denominator, which actually is just a square root, and under the square root we have 0 0.67 times 0 0.33, no need for extra parentheses or anything there, divided by 2500, close it up, hit enter, and we get the answer negative 2.13, so approximately negative 2.13 and that is basically our z test stat. Okay so from there we want to take that test stat and we want to put it on our curve with our critical value to see what our conclusion is. So if I draw the bell curve which I'll do actually I think I can do it down here I think it'll work fine so I'll draw the bell curve here Remember that the center is always at zero, and we're looking here at HA to determine what kind of test. It looks like a left-tailed test, right? So we need to figure out the critical value here. Please remember it will be negative. So let's go ahead and go to our table, our Z table, or our T table, pardon me, and we're going to look up this alpha value in one tail, because remember that we only have one tail in this problem because the HA indicates a left tail test. So 0.01 in one tail, go all the way to the bottom where we keep the Z values on the T chart, we'll find that critical value. Okay, so I'm at my T table and I'm looking up 0 0.01 in one tail and I'm going all the way to the bottom until we get to where we have the Z value. And if we go all the way to the bottom, we see that it's 2.326. 2.326. So we end up with a value negative 2.326. So 
So negative 2.326. Remember negative because it's on the left hand side. Now, where does this test stat land? It's minus 2.13. That's not quite in the rejection region, right? It's right here, just before 2.3, we have 2.1, right? So just before that, we land here, so we say do not reject the null hypothesis. Do not reject the null hypothesis. So do not reject HO, and therefore do not support Right? Because our test stat didn't fall in the rejection region, we have do not reject and therefore do not support. Now, what is our claim? Is it HA or HO? If you look at the symbol, it's HA, and because of that, we're going to say do not support the claim. So the sample data does not support the claim. The sample data does not support the claim. So we're not able to support the claim that less than two-thirds of the women um, spent over $1,000 on their wedding gown. So basically what the problem is is that that 6, 0.65 is awfully close to 0.67, and so they're not far enough apart to conclude that you can uh, reject the possibility that it actually is 0.67. All right, so one thing that, to address at the end of the problem here is this question. It says, if the results were obtained from internet users who voluntarily went to the web to answer the survey, does that affect the results in any way? And the answer is yes, because voluntary surveys, you know, the people who respond are often the people who feel most passionately about the subject, and they're willing to take the time out of their day to go and respond. So voluntary uh, responses like this, um, usually the results are not looked at as being valid, especially if there's a very large sample size that went out there. So, you know, we have 2,500 people who responded, but the question is, how many people actually, you know, you know, were polled initially? So, how many people were exposed to the survey versus how many people responded? If there's a very low response rate, that's usually an indication that um, the results can't be valid or can't be looked upon as being valid because, you know, it could be that then you have this selection bias where people who respond are the ones who feel most passionately about the subject and are willing to take the time out to answer the survey. So generally speaking, voluntary web surveys are not a good choice. And the other issue, of course, in this problem is that this is about the amount of money they spent on wedding dresses. And, you know, logging onto the internet can be difficult for poor people. And, you know, because if they don't have internet at home and they have to go to the public library to use it and they don't have their own computer at home and their own internet access that's fast and efficient, you know, they really don't have time to be, you know, going out all the way to the library just to answer the survey from Glamour magazine. They also very well may not be subscribers to the magazine and may not even be aware the survey exists. So because of that, you know, this would clearly perhaps, lead, uh, perhaps bias against people, you know, who are poor and mainly survey only the wealthy. And if you're surveying the relative wealthy, they're more likely to spend more money on the wedding gown. So for a lot of reasons, this is a poor um, data collection method. And so no matter what our conclusion was here, we'd have to look at it as, you know, being, you know, possibly erroneous anyways, because the data wasn't collected properly in the first place.